Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Coffee Flower Lab here in Seattle, Washington. Erin is coming over to join us. She is once again our handy dandy camera woman. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and today is a really exciting day. We are kind of giving an ode to summer, clutching the last <laughs> moments of summer. Um, this weekend is Labor Day weekend, which marks the official, unofficial end of summer. So we are milking it everything it's worth and bringing in some of the flavors of summer to kind of wrap it all up. Um, <laughs> kids are back in school. Almost all the kids are back in school. Those of you who do have kids back in school, congrats. Um, <laughs> some are going back this next week. So we want to make sure that they wrap their summers up in the best possible way. You as well. So we're going to do some classic summer treats, including I'm going to be making some coffee cherry uh, marshmallows. Marshmallows for sandwiched in between some graham crackers, which I'm making. Or we s'mores. We alluded to this last <laughs> time. Well, hopefully, you put the puzzle together when we said graham crackers, chocolate, and marshmallows. I know it was a complicated one. Yes, we're going to do the coffee flour s'mores. So, coffee cherry flour, both grind profiles in the graham crackers. Yes. And? And I'm actually utilizing both grind grind profiles myself in the marshmallow. Awesome. And then I'm going to take some of those graham crackers that are left over, not that there would be any left over from s'mores, but you might have some scraps, and I'm going to do a um, graham cracker crust with them. And if you know me at all, you know my obsession with lemon is huge. So I'm going to do a super, super easy whole lemon pie using a graham crack coffee flour graham cracker crust. So with all of these things, we're going to be demonstrating how delicious coffee cherry powder goes with chocolate, yeah. with sweet items yes. like the graham cracker, with chocolate. Uh, it just, it's just very good. Yeah. And then also how it works well with different citrus flavors. Typically mm -hmm. we use orange when we do our teas, which you're going to incorporate tea into the marshmallow. Yeah. This time we're going with lemon, so um, I'm going to jump right yeah, in if you let's don't get mind. Started. This is, this is going to be a busy one today, so <laughs> well, let me stop you. Do it. All right, we're going to start with marshmallows. So first we're going to start with a third of a cup of our coffee cherry tea. And so to make the coffee cherry tea, I'm using the coarse grind right here. Uh, a regular coffee pot, it's about 40 grams, a third of a, or a quarter of a cup in a paper filter to 12 cups of water. After it's brewed, you'll get about 10 cups of finished tea because of the absorption of the coffee cherry flour. Um, and we'll cool it down and use that tea as the base of this marshmallow. If you don't have the coarse grind access to it quite yet, then you can use water or any other flavored water that you'd like. But perfect tea. So third of a cup of tea, coffee cherry tea, and I'm gonna add Let's see, one and a third cup of sugar. And here's the thing about marshmallows. <laughs> They're sugary. So They're sugary. it's going to seem like, well, what's she putting in here? These are what marshmallows are made of. It is. It's air and it's sugar. air and sugar. Uh, two thirds of a cup of corn syrup. I'm going to put this in a pot, bring it to a boil, and use a candy thermometer. You're going to cook it until it reaches about 240 degrees. And while that comes up to a boil, I'm going to have Erin jump yes. into graham cracker. We're going to be doing a lot of back and forth today, so hang with forth. us. Perfect. So I'm going to do these graham crackers. We all know graham crackers from growing up as kids. I'm sure you have some in your pantry right now. This is kind of a sophisticated version of a graham cracker um, using, as I mentioned before, both grind profiles of the coffee cherry flour. So in a stand mixer, handy dandy stand mixer, we are going to do two sticks of butter. That's always a good way to start off a recipe. Mm -hmm. So two sticks of butter, that is about 225 grams. It helps if it's softened already. It should be softened. And then we're gonna do 160 grams or three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. The um, kind of identifying flavors of a graham cracker are that brown sugar and honey, which comes later, and graham flour, which um, you might not have ever bought before, but it is pretty widely available mm -hmm. in this kind of specialty flour section and, um, down the biking aisle. Yeah, so graham flour is it's made from wheat. It is a whole grain flour that has, it still has the germ yes. in it. And it's that very distinct graham 
flavor. Yes. You could go, oh, what's graham flavor? Graham fat. That's graham flavor. <laughs> so to my brown sugar and butter that I'm creaming here in the stand mixer, I'm doing one cup or 150 grams of the graham flour. So we've got a couple different graham words going in here. 150 grams of graham flour. 150 grams of a pea flour, that's your all-purpose flour. That's going in, good, good, good. Thank you. And we're going to do 80 grams or a quarter cup of honey. There is that classic flavor again. Make sure we get all that goodness. While she's scooping, I'm going back to marshmallows. Sorry to do this. This is coming up to a boil, so at this point, you're going to want to have your candy thermometer handy. And then in a mixing bowl, if you can grab, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to take, uh, sorry, my cheat sheet, two tablespoons of gelatin. I'm using powdered. I use sheet, and it works just fine. And then you're going to take the rest of your coffee cherry tea. It's a one cup total. Two thirds goes into here. One third goes into here to help bring your gelatin. Okay, all right, I'm going in with 60 grams of the coffee cherry flour. This is the regular rind. So you're going to see that these graham crackers do end up darker than what you typically expect. And then 20 grams or two tablespoons of the regular rind. Going in. And four grams or one teaspoon of salt. Salty, salty goodness. Everything is better with a little pinch of salt. A flavor brightener of salt is. Thank you. And that's all that's going into the graham cracker dough. Well, that seems easy enough. Super easy. And I'm going to take this, scrape the um, paddle down. I didn't mention, but I'm going to now, that you do want to mix this with a paddle, not with a whisk. You don't want to incorporate air into this. Plus, like most flour recipes, you don't want to overwork the flour yeah. and create a bunch of gluten in this particular recipe. So, between two sheets of parchment paper, I'm just going to, I'm only going to actually take about half of this dough. I'm going to save half. I'm going to refrigerate half. Okay. And that's beautiful about this dough is you can refrigerate it and save it for later. Yeah, I read on the recipe that it could be in the refrigerator for up to five days. If you don't think you're going to be using it within those five days, just pop it in the freezer. Yeah. So I'm going to press it out here, and I, as um, I have told people very recently, like with cho chocolate chip cookies, I will only scoop as many chocolate chip cookies as I think that I should be eating, <laughs> and I'll bake those off, and I'll put the rest of the dough in the refrigerator, and that prevents me from eating them In our family, we make them all, and then you have to eat them before they go bad, so your method is, is much more healthy than mine. So, <laughs> Oh, here's the other one. So this is a little trick that I'm going to use. Um, these are the long matchsticks. We use them to light our pilots here. Um, and these are the perfect dimension for the thickness that I want my dough. So I'm just going to lay them on either side of the dough here. Actually, I'm going to do it on top of the parchment just to keep it clean. Um, you know, you can use wooden dowels if you have the right size. But this lets your rolling pin get an even pressure mm -hmm. along the dough. So you have a very evenly um, evenly rolled dough. And that's important for graham crackers. You don't want graham crackers that are all, you know, some are this thick, some are that thick, they're mm -hmm. gonna cook in evenly. And what you want your graham cracker to be is even so that it cooks evenly, so that it has that even crunch. So I'm gonna cut a little bit off here with my pastry cutter, just so I have an again an even surface to start cutting. Save that scrap that you're Save cutting them. off. You can re-roll it yep. and use it. So my syrup here is coming to up to about 238 degrees. I'm going to shut it off. It'll come up to 240 on its own. In the meantime I have my bloomed gelatin. Should have done that first but remember mm -hmm. after I started the sugar and that's okay. It's still going to work. I'm going to use my whisk just to make sure that all of the gelatin is moist and bloomed so we don't have any chunks. At that point, 
I'm going to add, sorry, Erin, I'm just going to bump in here, but I have one tablespoon, one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of our regular grind uh, coffee cherry powder. Add that and then a teaspoon of salt. And I have the mixer back behind us because this is going to take a little bit of time. At this point, I'm going to put this whisk attachment onto the mixer. I'm going to slowly stream this really hot, hot sugar liquid. If this touches your skin, it's going to be really bad. So be careful. A lot of times we talk about bringing kiddos into the kitchen. This is not the recipe. This is not the one. So no. I'm going to just come over here. Might be out of frame. Nope, you're still in. And then keep this on low while you're streaming it in. Slowly pour all of your syrup in. So this is the um, occasion where you want to use the, the whisk on the stand mixer because as we said, marshmallows are sugar and air and the whisk is what's going to incorporate the air. Nobody wants a really dense, um, thin marshmallow. You want that light fluffiness and the whisk is what's going to do that. It's whipping that sugar. It's incorporating a bunch of air into it. And don't rush this stage or it's going to be shooting hot boiling sugar everywhere in your, in your kitchen. Not good. Not good. It'll take your skin right off. So once all the sugar mixture has been poured in, that's when you can turn this up onto a high speed. And it's gonna take about 15 minutes, a couple more, a couple less. Okay. And it's done when the bowl is lukewarm to the batch. Perfect, well that is going, I am going to cut graham crackers. Um, graham crackers typically come in that shape that's all perforated so you can break them off into sections. If you wanna go ahead and do that intricate cutting, knock yourself out, I don't wanna do that. So <laughs> I, um, like the little kind of single serving, so maybe an inch by four inches. You can go fancy with a ruler. I'm not a fancy gal. I'm just going to use my rolling pin as a guide. Yep. Bring the kids for this one. This you can have crazy shaped crackers. Um, so you can use the back of a knife. You can use a pizza cutter. This is a pastry wheel. What's this called? A pastry wheel? I think so. I think it's called a pastry wheel. That works. I'm going to grab you a fork for perforating. Thanks. Perforating, there's a term. So um, if you go into your pantry and you pull out those gram that box of crackers that you have in there, you'll see that they all have the little um, dots in them. That is the preparation that Chelsea just referred to. And that's so that they don't pop up. So I'm just going along here. They don't have to be even unless you want those perfect crackers. Again, knock yourself out. That's your style. But I'm going to go through and I'm just going to take this fork. Whoops, I look very good with that one. And this is called docking. I'm going to dock these crackers. Just a couple fork marks in each one. And again, it will prevent them from, come, from popping up in the oven. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to chill this. Um, these crackers do need to be chilled when they go into the oven. That, that butter that's in there needs to be chilled. Otherwise, if you put them in at room temp, put them into the oven, they're going to spread everywhere. So what you want to do is just put this in the refrigerator on a sheet pan, or you can cover it with plastic or another piece of parchment, depending on how big your fridge is. It also gives the coffee cherry powder a chance to absorb some of the moisture in the recipe, which again will help it from spreading. It'll give you a much nicer mouthfeel after it's cooked. And it only needs to chill, I don't know, maybe half an hour, just enough time for the, the butter to get a little bit of um, stiffness to it. And then after that, you want to break them apart. You don't want to bake them like this, just break them apart. And they literally will just break apart. They've been, you know, cut with the, with the pastry wheel. Put them about one inch apart on a sheet pan. Cook them at 350 for about, well, depending on the size, um, about 10 minutes, between 8 and 10 minutes. That's all there is to that. I've got some cooking here in the oven. Multitasking. So on these guys, I went with the uh, classic three by three. So I'm gonna try to pick one of these up. That would be too bad. 
ends of steel. Yeah, pigeon fingers. Um, you can see that they've got the little dock marks in there. They are really dark brown. They have an amazing ram flavor. And the honey really comes out. Because the coffee cherry powder is such a flavor enhancer, mm -hmm. the honey, the sweetness of them really comes out, which is fantastic. It acts as a salt enhancing yeah. those flavors. Yes. So for my next recipe, actually, Chelsea, do you want to yeah. swap out equipment here? Do you want to talk about what coffee cherry Yes, I will. And then I also need to explain how we can prep our container. So coffee cherry powder and our coffee cherry coarse brine come from the fruit that surround the coffee bean. Uh, up until our founder was at Origin, men, much of the fruit just piles up in these large mountains. It rots, it distributes into the water system, reaches into the ground, and creates kind of a mess in these Origin countries. So we're going in, we're stabilizing and drying the coffee cherry, which will then look like this, and then we grind it into two different sizes. The green bean that is inside that fruit is gonna go a separate way and be roasted for your morning cup of joe. We can take this, grind it into our coarse grind, which is most of the time used for beverage, but can also be used in many, many baking products. And then we have our powder grind, which is similar in appearance and in texture to cocoa powder. And that is coffee cherry. So by utilizing this, we're increasing nutrition, we're cleaning up an environmental hazard, yep. and we're increasing jobs and support at the Yeah. So all around good stuff. This is still whipping. It looks like it has another five minutes to go about. Um, it's getting very light in color. I want to show this to you real quick. So this is what it's looking like right now. It's still too loose to be a marshmallow, and it's still a little too hot. You can tell by touching the bowl, but it becomes this really beautiful light color. So if you wanted to, you could take it at this stage, and could you put it, say, on the pie that I'm about to make? You could. It's and still a it? little loose. It's gonna. Oh, okay. It's gonna so cool. it so you need it to cool. Perfect. Yes. And the reason why I say that is I'll come back to it. Yeah. But they have to cure or set for at least four hours before you can cut into it. Okay. Otherwise, you have a mess. Okay. Yeah. Um, while it's flipping, I'm going to take parchment, or you can use plastic, and to get this ready for your marshmallow after it's beat, spray with a little bit of oil, and then I have a combination, a quarter cup of cornstarch and a quarter cup of powdered sugar. And this is going to be your base because they are a sticky mess. Yep. And if you're using this, then you can cut them, you can handle them, and you can have individual marshmallows. So just help them keep their shape, be much less messy. So to prep, you have the oil, and then you're gonna spoon about a third of this mixture till it's evenly on it, and then set it aside for when they're ready. Okay, back to you. Back to me. <laughs> So we've established that I love citrus, lemon specifically. We've established in almost every rest, in every episode that I like the simple recipes. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. This is my jam right here. Um, this is a whole lemon filling. I have seen this kind of recirculating recently. I don't know if it's just because it's the end of summer or people have just discovered that you can use the whole lemon when you make a lemon filling. When you make a lemon curd, you take the juice and the butter and the eggs and you just a lot of stuff. I like easy, so I'm going to use the whole darn thing. Lemons, we all have them. What I've done here, one lemon, I have cut it thinly, and all I've done is take the seeds out. You can, you, in this recipe, you're using the rind, the pulp, the pith, everything, everything except for the seeds. Whole lemon. The whole lemon. That's why it's called a whole lemon pot. So this whole lemon, in this life, goes into the blender. We've got 300 grams of sugar. Seems like a lot, but because you're using the whole lemon, you do need that sweetness to counteract the sourness of the, the lemon and the bitterness of the pith. One stick of butter. This recipe is not for the faint of heart, I'll just warn you. But a teaspoon of vanilla. You won't be sorry if you try it. It's so good. <laughs> and four large eggs. And they're all going in. into a blender. Honestly, mm -hmm. this is the easiest filling. I made it yesterday. <laughs> People kept coming down saying, well, what else are you doing to it? 
marshmallow from the mixer. The bowl is just lukewarm to the touch, barely warmer than my hand temperature, and it is thick when you pull it up. Isn't that gorgeous? To work with it, spatula, a little bit of cooking spray, a little goes a long way here, and we'll scrape it off of our feeder as best we can. You're not going to get it all, and that's okay. So, okay, all right, Sorry. <laughs> didn't know if you were done. If you had more to, more to talk about the, the beater, maybe like who gets to lick that beater. I don't know. You can lick it, but it's a serious mess. Yeah, so that's all right. So for the graham cracker crust, I took some of the graham crackers that I just showed you, and I just put them in a food processor. This is another great one to get the kids involved if you don't want to be the food processor, if you have a um, seal, plastic bag, put the graham crackers in there, let those kids bash away. They can use a rolling pin if they know how to properly be responsible with it, or they can just bash it with their little fists. Um, to the graham crackers, and that's what I'm ending up with is about a cup and a half of the crushed graham crackers. And I added oh, three tablespoons of just white granulated sugar. And to that, I am going to add, I melted some butter earlier. This is about six tablespoons of butter. So I'm gonna add that in. And this is a graham cracker crust. Mm -hmm. I think we've all made them before. They're very, very simple. You could add cinnamon or nutmeg or any type of spices to this, but I'm gonna let this one, just let the coffee cherry flower, coffee cherry powder shine through. That's what I was gonna say. With this, you don't need the cinnamon and the nutmeg no. because it naturally gives it that really nice flavor. Um, I'm gonna take half of these marshmallows. And as I said, spray this a little bit so it's easier to work with. And you whoo, put That's it in fantastic. your prepared container. Do you want a, so much fun, a this to scrape the that? No, I'm gonna okay. use a glove. Yeah, and I'm gonna save some of this for a reason that you will see soon enough. Okay. Yes. Okay, so while she's doing that, I have decided that I'm going to do this shape. So a tart. A, the difference between a pie and a tart is a pie typically has a crust that comes up the sides, and a tart typically just has a bottom crust. A little education for you there. So I'm not gonna use all of these graham cracker crumbs in this tart because it's a smaller pan but I am going to spread them evenly in the pan. Mm -hmm. I think I will use this now. Okay. I put on a glass, you can use a spoon or some of the parchment. And you're just gonna push this down. As I was saying, sticky, sticky mess. If you need a little help with the handling, you have your cornstarch powder sugar mixture. You can dust it on top and then continue to push it down to as thick or as thin as you would like your marshmallows. Just keep in mind that the thicker the marshmallow is, the longer it's gonna need to set up. So instead of that four hour mark, you might wanna let them sit overnight. Okay, now I'm gonna show you that beautiful whole lemon filling. It is this gorgeous color, look at that. It's so beautiful. I hope the camera can pick that up and it smells amazing, it is fresh and citrusy and buttery and tart and sweet all at the same time. It's everything you want in lemon filling beef. I have taken those crushed up graham crackers and I have spread them in the bottom of my tart pan. I'm just gonna take this filling, I'm gonna pour it right on top. It's so pretty, it's a 
gorgeous, gorgeous color. And I'm gonna pop this into a 350 degree oven. And I'm gonna let it, a, a nine inch pie, I had to let uh, bake for 35, about 35 minutes. This is a little smaller, so I'm gonna check it at 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna check it every five minutes after that. And be aware that this is going to get nicely browned on top. Yes, it's not so, gonna look like this beautiful lemon color, but it's still very free of cup kernelizers. Right, so a lemon curd, you pour in after it's been tempered and cooked on the stove top and it stays that bright, bright yellow color. This is baked after the fact, so it is going to brown on top. So yeah. don't expect this, this creamy, um, beautiful, light, golden lemon color, but it is going to be this beautiful caramelized. Caramelized, yeah. It, you haven't done anything wrong. It tastes delicious. And if you so choose, as you will see in a moment, you can always top it with things like, I don't know, powdered sugar or meringue or marshmallow, perhaps. <laughs> so that's just going in there. I always put it on a sheet pan whenever I'm baking something that has a liquid filling. I always put it on a sheet pan because I've had to clean out more than my share of ovens where the filling has gone over the edge. So sheet pan is so much easier to clean yep. up than the bottom of an oven. Thank you. Thank you. So that's that. filling in just like that. Um, this is one that I cooked yesterday. I did dust it with powdered sugar. You can see the ring of the graham cracker crust around it. It is dark. But that's what we were just talking about. And this is the marshmallow. I again dusted some of this mixture, pressed it down, let this sit for about four hours so I can put this up. All right. All right, so would you like a little? I would like a little. All right. I'm going to use a spoon. If you have some boiling water or an Insta Hot, and then a little spray, this will help prevent some of the sticking that I've been talking about. But yeah, maybe. There we go. I mean, it's a marshmallow. It is. It's supposed to be sticky. It is. That's part of it. You can get fancy decorative. Put in a piping bag. Now this might be a little tough, but you can get the idea. <laughs> you gotta be patient with that. So yeah. while that's starting, why don't we assemble what we're really all here for, and that's the s'mores. So we have our three by three inch graham crackers. I think I need my, my glove or something. I think I hair. need a marshmallow. That I could do. Yeah. <laughs> I made these yesterday. They've had an opportunity to set up, cure if you will. The best way to handle them at this point, I believe, is with scissors. And you can use either the same powdered sugar mixture with cornstarch or just powdered sugar. Dip the blades and then Cut into your desired shape. That goes on there. Um, and now, because we've been told we can't build a campfire in the kitchen, yeah. we're going to go with the torch because everybody loves a torch. We are. I'm, instead of doing it on the wood board, I'm going to put it on this metal plate. And, and oh my! marshmallow got that's that sugar caramelizing and the chocolate underneath is starting to melt you guys know how to build a s'more take a graham cracker on top and smush it down oh my gosh. and look at that it's this beautiful campfire treat that we all know and love it's just a more sophisticated version now when we go to the ocean right around this time of year oftentimes you can't build fires on the beach so we will do s'mores in the oven mm -hmm. and you just take a sheet pan and line those s'mores up open face, so put one graham cracker down, a piece of chocolate, marshmallow on top, and put it under the boiler for just a minute. <laughs> Again, I have made the mistake many, many times. And um, those marshmallows will get all gooey, 
again, put that top graham cracker on there, and you have instant sheet pan of s'mores to satisfy the masses. Yes. We will have all of these recipes available to you um, on our Facebook page. Yep. Or you can follow us on our Instagram, which is Coffee Flower Lab. We have photos of the s'mores, the marshmallow, and the graham cracker. Yep. Make these at home. Yep. Don't be intimidated. You saw how easy it was. We were able to make three recipes, and I can't wait to try that pie. It's going to be good. In less than 20 minutes. Yay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, we will be back in two weeks. No idea what we're going to make. If you have any ideas, any suggestions, throw them our way. Yeah. And in the meantime, go and try to get some coffee cherry flour. You can get us at Mark's Foods uh, or Mark's Pantry. Markspantry.com. Yeah. Uh, we're also available on Amazon from when Trader Joe's was carrying us. Uh -huh. Nuts.com. Very good. Nuts.com um, is carrying both wine profiles right now. All right. And if you're in Seattle, uh, Merlino's Foods, right? Merlino's Foods. Yeah. yeah. So until then, um, I guess we'll see you in two weeks. We'll see you in two weeks. Enjoy yourselves and make it a good day. It's time for us to have a sugar rush. I'm going to go turn off the camera. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. These look good. Thanks again for joining us, everyone.